insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights in Entertainment. This is episode 68. Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. Yes, this is episode 68. Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. You're so proud of yourself. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my delightful and informative co host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. So the show title is a bit of a lie. We, we do have more than just Star Wars, but it's mostly Star Wars it's mostly. this week. So it, it's, a, it's a very yin and yang because there are weeks when nothing about Star Wars Last you know, week was pretty out. Star Wars light. And, you know, this week it just seemed like everything was kind of Star yep, Wars related. Except the so. first story we'll be talking yeah. about in Disney Detective, which is the official plans to open... Uh, Disney World, uh, we now have dates associated mm-hmm. with them. So that's moving right along. Uh, then in the Star Wars Insights, we'll talk about Disney World using stormtroopers to encourage social distancing. And then uh, a favorite character of ours, uh, the character actor um, who played him, is emerging back again in the Star Wars galaxy, uh, Ahmed Best, who played Jar Jar Binks. And then we will talk about the next phase of the Star Wars universe being delayed, which is unfortunate. Then we have, uh, in entertainment news, we have some Mandalorian news with the Golden Globes. Mm -hmm. And then we will uh, finish up with our insightful picks of the week. So, a Star Wars-filled show this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are we ready to get started? Sure. All right. Go for Disney Detective. So this week, Disney uh, World released their um, their phased reopening plan for the resorts and the hotels and even the Disney stores they had mentioned as well. Um, so we had Shanghai Disney Resort that had opened up. You also had Disney Springs, which opened up. So now... They um, basically submitted a proposal to the Orange County Economic Recovery Task Force in Florida, fi- you know, outlining their um, their guidelines. And the plan is that Animal Kingdom and Magic Kingdom would open to the general public on July 11th. And then Epcot and Hollywood Studios would open on June 15th. Um, so you have July, I'm sorry, July, <laughs> July 11th. Woo, let's try this again. July 11th and July 15th for the other two. Um, so obviously with the phased opening, um, you know, limits on attendance, uh, controlled density of, you know, the various areas. Um, they've already sent out notices to guests that had reservations, um, because certain reservations had already been canceled. And in some cases they had pushed reservations out. And for um, guests that had original reservations, they actually ended up giving them a free dining plan for not canceling for postponing. Well, now with the different, you know, phases of, of reopening, that's actually something that they had to modify. So, you know, one of the first things was with social distancing and whatnot. So they are, um, they're not canceling forever, but as of now, there will be no parades, 
uh, either daytime or nighttime parades, and no fireworks. So basically nothing where people would be grouping together in, in large you know, uh, large numbers. Um, the other thing is that no, uh, high touch experiences would be allowed either. And that would be the makeovers that they do, um, the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique and they have the Pirate League. So those are suspended for now, as well as character meet and greets. So obviously they had mentioned that face characters weren't going to be around because of having to wear a mask, but now you're not going to be able to go and meet any characters, but they are going to have characters walking around, uh, you know, to kind of have a presence there, but you're not going to be able to actually go in and, and, and meet with any of them. Um, they've also, um, for the dining plan, they actually canceled the dining plan for the rest of this year. So if you had already pre-purchased it, you're now going to be getting a 35% discount on your room to make up for it. And there, uh, if you had reservations for character meals, those have now been discontinued, at least for the rest of this year. Um, they also talked about if you had fast passes already and you had dining reservations, all of that has now been wiped clean because now it's basically starting fresh because now you have to, you know, if you already had a ticket purchased, now you have to kind of go back into the reservation system and rebook that vacation. So annual pass holders have to do the same thing, kind of like what they did with Shanghai Disney was once they opened it, they were only allowing so many, um, you know, capacity of so many people per day per visit, they're basically doing the same thing. So as of right now, you can't purchase a brand new ticket, but if you've already had a ticket for when this time frame is opening, now you have to kind of go back in and redo everything because of the, the limit of the capacity that they're, they're uh, doing. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what their capacity is like. Um, they did announce for vacation club owners, which we happen to be, um, that they'll be reopening that to members and guests. So Disney's uh, Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground will begin reopening on June 22nd. And the vacation clubs in Vero Beach, Florida, and Hilton Head will also be reopening starting June 15th. So they're actually opening up. Obviously, Vero Beach and, and Hilton Head have nothing to do with Walt Disney World because they're nowhere, you know, really near it. But there are people that obviously still go there for vacations. And they'll obviously be adhering to a lot of the social distancing you know, guidelines as well. Only so many people at the pool. And, and that was even something um, on some of the different Disney groups um, that I'm part of on Facebook. They were talking about, well, what do I do at the pool? Is the pool even open? And it did mention uh, that the pool would be open. But if you're not in the pool, you need to have your mask on and obviously spaced out. And I guess in the pool, the lifeguards will probably, you know ask you to move around but you don't have to wear the mask when you're in the pool so it'll be a very interesting to hear from people that still go and what their experience you know well, is it like it certainly sounds like they're they're lining it up to be a very different experience oh absolutely than what traditional disney experiences mm -hmm. are and let me ask you even with all those um not that we intend to go but even with all these restrictions and changes would you still go? I don't know. That's a really tough Because, I mean, you're getting call. rid of a, a ton of these group experiences that are really what make up the Disney experience. Well, and that's the thing is, like, you know, the, the dining, we don't always do a character dining. If we do, it's kind of like a last-minute thing. So for us, that's not, like, a make-or-break, but... If I can't see fireworks, right. You're not or, see fireworks or illuminations or, or um, illuminations anything. isn't there anymore, uh, Fantasmic, it would definitely be, you know, a different experience. But, 
you know. And you're paying the same price. And you're paying the same so price. So you're getting 60% of the experience yeah. at 100% of the price. And that's, you know, but then again, the park isn't going to be as crowded. So what's the wait time going to be like on the, you know, so do you get to go on all the rides that you would normally go on but without... The park's not going to be as crowded, but they're not going to be packing the rides as tight either. Right, true, true, you know, so there, there, there's that, you know, and the other thing too is we very rarely go during the summer anyway, you know, we've that's, we, we've learned our lesson, we did it a couple of times and, you know, so I can't even imagine, you know, just going out shopping now and having to wear a mask ha- with the warm weather, I can't imagine being in Florida having to wear a mask. Now during, you know, October might not be so bad. It might, you know, keep me warm when it gets a little chilly. Um, but yeah, I, I just, it's not that it's a deal breaker that I'll never go back to Disney, but well, I can, I can wait. How long are these measures going to last? Right, too? exactly, so exactly. And, and that's you're, the you're thing. You're looking at maybe a year yeah, I could I off. could see us going not this Christmas, you know, because we were originally talking about possibly redoing what we did. But I could still see us going to like Vero Beach yeah. because we really enjoyed Vero Beach. Now, would we spend a whole week down in Vero Beach? Probably not. You know, and do we need to drive all the way down to Vero Beach to have that same experience where we could probably find a resort? beach resort you know within a couple of hours um so but you're probably still gonna run into the same restrictions you know no matter where you go that you know that's the thing is what's summer gonna be like for a lot of people you're absolutely right so would i go you know if we had a reservation for this summer we probably would have canceled it. Or even the fall, well, if we had... if we had a reservation for the summer, I don't think we'd have a choice. Well, no, but, like, if we had something, like, end of August. Oh, definitely. Like, before definitely. school, you know, because we've done that before as well, I think we probably would have would have canceled. And even if we had something, you know, like the October time frame that we normally go, But I think probably... you've got the right idea. I think it's a wait and see. Mm-hmm. Let's let some of the folks who are, are a little bit more adventurous than we are go mm-hmm. down there and test the waters and, and yeah. let's see what the reviews yeah. are like. Yeah. So, but that was all we had for our uh, Disney detective mm-hmm. this week. Yep. Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back with our Star Wars insights. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Disney. Uh, uh, oh, blah, I blew my line. Yep. Go for Star Wars Insights. <laughs> um, so Walt Disney World is rolling out some stormtroopers to help encourage social distancing in the areas that are open. So Star Wars characters are pacing around and encouraging people to wear masks and look out for each other. 
Um, Disney Springs has been open for about a week now, and the Orlando shopping area has been very busy. And with the increased foot traffic, the necessity of social distancing has come back into focus again. Uh, When the park first announced the safety measures for reopening, obviously there were a lot of people that said they weren't very keen on observing the new directives. And that's where the stormtroopers came in. So along with other park workers, they're kind of keeping things light and, you know, making it known that, you know, safety is their top concern. But the stormtroopers are kind of patrolling the area, making sure everybody's staying, you know, a safe distance away and that people, you know, are covering, you know, their masks. So seems I, I could definitely see how, you know, how they acted when we were in Galaxy's Edge, that type of thing. So, you know, helps to to lighten the mood and, you know, enforce their Now are they know. doing this outside of Galaxy's Edge? Yeah, this is actually at at Disney Springs. So, okay, so they're, this is... They're patrolling Disney Springs at this point because the okay. parks aren't open. And, you know, because a lot of guests have been showing up at, at Disney Springs to, you know, have some Disney magic, you know, happen. Um, and that's the other thing is that the first phase of Disney Springs was just the, the third party companies opening up. Well, now... Uh, The world of Disney has now opened and all the other uh, Disney owned properties have opened. Now, are they going to be doing this throughout the other parks or they haven't said, you know, it would be kind of funny for stormtroopers to be in the Magic Kingdom. But then, well, it's kind of funny for them to be in Disney Springs. Well, yeah, true, true. But but at least they're wearing masks. At least they are wearing masks. So cute little Disney uh, Star Wars story. Nice. You know what I miss? I miss Jar Jar Binks. Do you? I, I do deeply. Could you tell us about Jar Jar? <laughs> I thought you hated Jar Jar Binks. Wait a second. So the actor that played Jar Jar Binks, uh, Ahmed Best, who was once targeted, you know, with being one of the worst Star Wars characters, is now making a return to the Star Wars galaxy. Um, so the actor who was known for voicing and performing in the motion capture um, of Jar Jar Binks in the uh, prequel trilogies is back, but this time as himself. So he will be the host of the upcoming Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge game show, which will be on YouTube's Star Wars kids channel so basically think of the uh double dare or legends of the hidden temple Mm -hmm. game show um so they were actually filmed at disneyland's galaxy's edge theme park uh it was a 10 uh episode series it was actually originally supposed to play on disney plus before they ended up moving it to youtube um so Basically, it, it's, you know, two teams of Padawans are paired up, uh, you know, and tested on their ability to become Jedi Knights through a series of strengths and knowledge trials. Um, obviously, he, um, you know, he was known as being, again, like we said, one of the worst characters, not for any fault of, of his own. It right. had nothing to do with him. Um, but he actually had revealed back in 2018 how, you know, he actually got death threats yeah, for his character. Yeah. And that... Well, and you know, after seeing the things that came out after mm-hmm. Last Jedi right. and some of the harassment that came out of there... Oh, it's it, it crazy is what... Not, it's not surprising. Yeah. It's unfortunate. But yeah. It's not and, you know, and he said that, you know, he actually contemplated suicide because of, of everything. It was just so hard to, to deal with. And that he, you know, took the time and and regrouped and realized, you know, he said it's still hard to even talk about it, um, but that he was even going to come up with like a one man show inspired by Phantom Menace but he 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 never he didn't decide to not do it it's still kind of like in the works um but he actually ended up um doing something at Star Wars Celebration last year and the fans were just like yeah, in yeah. awe of him and uh, you know standing ovation and he said it was like you know the most moving thing 
ever because it was such a 180. Yeah, the amount of support that he got you know. at Celebration mm-hmm. was outstanding. It was it was nice to yeah. see. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's he's been part of not only doing the trilogy, but he also voiced Jar Jar in the animated series as well. And he even ended up doing um, Jar Jar Binks on Robot Chicken Star Wars episode. Um, and he'll actually be part of the voice for the Legos Star Wars game that we had talked about, the Skywalker saga. So he'll even be part of that. Right. Uh, so kind of cool that, you know, he's come full circle and and now will be hosting uh, this little game show, which sounds kind of cute, you know. It'll be interesting to see uh, the trivia questions. <laughs> well, and, you know, just as an aside for... You know my feelings on Jar Jar. When Phantom Menace came out, I was in the camp that I I couldn't stand the character. Mm-hmm. I thought he was incredibly annoying, and and I still think he's incredibly annoying. The character, not right. the actor. Mm-hmm. And there was an interview that George Lucas had done, mm-hmm. yeah, in which he very eloquently articulated what Jar Jar was mm-hmm. and what it was meant to be. Right, and. And George explained that by saying, you know, Star Wars has always been for the kids. Mm -hmm. And when the original series came out, the original trilogy came out, I was a kid. And and there were goofy characters in there Mm -hmm. that you you fell in love with. You know, R2-D2 and C-3PO, they were there for the human commentary. You had um, the Ewoks. You know, the Ewoks were the... the, the Cute little teddy bear. Right, the little teddy bears you got. Mm -hmm. So... He explained that the the characters are in here for the kids, mm-hmm. and Jar Jar Binks was in there to provide a kid's perspective on the commentary of everything that was going right. on. And if you go back and you watch the series with that in mind, you kind of realize that, yeah, when Phantom Menace starts out, it's politics. It's right. disputed trade routes. It's stuff that kids don't care about. Right. So you had to put something like a Jar Jar Binks in there to keep to, their to attention. keep the kids yeah. going and keep mm-hmm. sort of not dumb it down, but explain right. it to you from a kid's perspective. Right. And that's exactly what Ahmed Best did. Mm-hmm. You know, he he personified that kid that was out there watching the movie. And I think a lot of the problem was the adults like me who watched it, who were avid fans of the original trilogy, right. weren't kids anymore. Right. So you didn't see it. So that character it. was not meant for right. us. That character was meant for the kids. Mm-hmm. And and he did a fantastic job. And then, ironically, in the end, it turns out that he was the catalyst to everything, if you think about mm-hmm. it. He, so Jar Jar Binks was like the ultimate Sith behind everything. Right. He was the downfall of the Jedi. Right, so. right. It, it's it's a whole different perspective when you look at it from the, you know, he was the childlike perspective that the kids could get behind, mm-hmm. and it worked out very well. And, and to kind of what this article also said was that for the 20th anniversary, Lucas had actually done a pre-recorded message where he actually named Jar Jar as his favorite Star Wars right. character. So, And it's, you know, it's a shame that the character was misinterpreted by mm-hmm. People like me mm-hmm. who didn't understand yeah. the purpose of the character, and and he took a lot of heat for it. So, so it's I'm nice to see. Glad to see him coming back yeah. strong and still part of the Star Wars universe. Yeah. So, the next phase of the Star Wars universe is delayed. Why is that? Well, it is the Star Wars High Republic. The ambitious cross media collection of books and comics has now been delayed into 2021. The announcement actually came this past Tuesday on uh, Star Wars official website. So the High Republic is the new setting of the Star Wars universe that takes place 200 years before the events of Phantom Menace. So the media onslaught will now begin on January 5th. So the first book that will be coming out is the adult novel Star Wars, The High Republic, Light of the Jedi. Then there will be the mid-grade novel Star Wars, High Republic, A Test of Courage. 
Then there'll be the adult, uh, young adult novel entitled uh, Star Wars The High Republic Into the Dark, which will come out in February. Um, and then after that, you'll have the Marvel comics uh, that will be- come out sometime after that. Um, you know, basically their creative team said that with you know, the unprecedented times we have made the decision to move the launch of star Wars high Republic to January, 2021 to ensure that the launch has a grand and as, as grand and as epic as it deserves to be. So not surprising. Cause we know a lot of other things are, are going to be pushed out that we're supposed to, you know, come out sooner. So just, you know, we just got to wait till, January for it, so. Well, it's one of those things that, you know, it's not like that blockbuster movie that you're waiting for. Right. Um, And it's one of those things that if you're going to do it, do it right. Mm -hmm. Don't rush it out the door just for the sake of getting it out the door. Right. So I look forward to reading them when they come out. Mm -hmm. So it should be interesting. Yep. Uh, So that was all we had on our Star Wars Insights. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll be back with our Entertainment News of the Week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. So tell us about the Mandalorian's mask situation. Yeah, this was actually kind of interesting. So the Mandalorian made, you know, uh, a choice of casting, you know, someone famous and, you know, kind of handsome looking, you know, actor to play the role that basically really doesn't show his face at all until, you know, episode eight of the whole season. Um, So as the show's bounty hunter, uh, he basically was mostly hooded for the entire first season, except again for the finale. So now because of that, which is kind of funny is that the Hollywood foreign press association had made a change to its golden globes eligibility. So as stated um, by the golden or the Hollywood foreign press, Voice only performances are not eligible in any acting category. So, according to Variety, that clarification comes directly from the fact that Pascal's performance is technically voice only, minus roughly about 20 seconds of FaceTime. Now, he wasn't nominated or up for a Golden Globe, but just the mere fact that he could have been has now like added this little, you know, subcategory or, or, uh, you know, sub ruling on it, which was kind of funny. So when you think about it, baby Yoda, who had more screen time than anybody else, he could actually be up for a golden globe and he's a puppet, but yet Pascal. Well, see, and I think, I think that's a little ridiculous because it's not like he was voicing the character from on stage. He was in the suit. He well, was on stage and he was doing the acting. Well, and that's the other thing is that from watching the Mandalorian special, the documentary on Disney Plus, you we did find out that he wasn't in the suit as often as well he didn't do his own stunts he had stunt guys right but it actually one of the things that um 
actually came out was that he wasn't even with the stunts and stuff there was a lot of time when he wasn't actually in it because he was actually doing rehearsals for king lear on broadway which is what this article talks mm. about. So there were lots of times when his stunt doubles actually were there. So when we were watching it and you could and you saw him doing the voiceover work, that was a lot of what he did. So he wasn't on set as much right. as they were saying. So hmm. well, I see and I don't obviously I don't I'm not an expert on I don't make up the rules. Right, right. But a voice actor is a voice actor. You right. do everything in the studio. You record all your lines, mm -hmm. whatever. You never put on the costume. You well, never, and, and you never get out there on the on the performing stage to do the role itself. Right. I think as soon as you put that costume on and you step onto the set and mm -hmm. you are filmed on camera, right. whether your face is covered or not, mm -hmm. then so that so that does does that mean that. That David Prowse, who played Vader and never took his mask off when he was playing Vader, would never have been nominated either? Right, but that's the whole thing. Because he didn't even do the voice. Right, and th but that was where I was just going to say, okay, so does David Prowse get the nomination or does James Earl Jones? Well, who James did... Earl Jones would have been the voice-only character right. there because he never exactly. put the costume on. But the other thing, too, is thinking about it, even though they give awards for Best Animated none of the actors that are ever part of an animated get a nomination for and I'm themselves. I'm not arguing that. If their no, rule I is, right. If the rule is if you're a voice actor, you can't be nominated, that's fine. So right. in that case, right. we'll, we'll use Darth Vader again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So Darth Vader in the original trilogy mm -hmm. was the acting portion of it was mm -hmm. David Prowse. Right. Minus the stunts. Right. The voice was James Earl Jones. Mm-hmm. So therefore, James Earl Jones wouldn't be nominated. Correct. But David Prowse would. Correct. But you don't see his face either. Right. So because even he, when he takes off his mask, it's not. It's Sebastian uh, Shaw who's the actor. Right. So it, you have a third person right. doing. But my point is, with right. the Mandalorian, he obviously did voiceover work for because mm -hmm. they had to they had to modulate his voice for the right. for the costume. Right. But he put the costume on. He stepped on the set. He acted. Right. He did at some point, but from what this article, I understand. You might not have I done know. all of it. I know. But as soon he as wasn't you put that in costume every. On, right. As soon as you put yes, that costume on. I agree. And you step on the set. I agree. And you are filmed. You are an actor. Mm -hmm. I agree. You stop being a voice actor. So. That's my two cents. These award shows are so full of I know, themselves anymore. I know. All these rules and these technicalities. I know. It makes me wonder what the whole purpose of this is. Why are they trying to not recognize talent? There's mm -hmm. this push to not recognize talent. Are people so terrified that new technologies and new Could creative be. methods are <laughs> threatening their, their way of life? Because that's what it strikes me with the whole Netflix and the Oscars thing. Right. And, I can see that. And it sounds similar similar yeah. to that here. It's like it's it's a it's an award for creative talent and skill. Mm -hmm. Why would you not want to give it to someone who deserves it? Why are you coming up with reasons not to give it to people? It just <laughs> it seems idiotic to me. Yeah. Anyway, my two cents. Okay. But that was all we had for entertainment news. That was it. All right. Slow yeah. week. Yep. That's okay. We will be right back with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick this week is a series on Netflix called Sweet Magnolias. It's an American romance drama um, series that is actually based on the novels Sweet Magnolias. Um, and it's Basically, the story of three best friends uh, in South Carolina um, who, you know, now they're they're adults, they're moms, they're successful and basically dealing with their, you know, the challenges of of, you know, being adults and, and raising kids and and, you know, being successful. Um, and it's, you know, your your typical romance drama 
type show. <laughs> It has a very, um, you know, Gilmore Girls feel to it. Um, what, what's kind of funny is, um, you know, they, they run into, you know, everybody lives in the same town that they grew up in. And it's that southern hospitality and, you know, like, oh, bless her heart, you know, you know, so it's like the, the southern insults, you know, that you say to somebody, but it sounds really nice. So that's kind of you know, cute that they have that um, in there. Um, what's interesting is when I was reading about the actual books, so season one leaves off with a, a big cliffhanger. Hopefully there'll be a season two. Um, but from the books, um, like the, I think there's three books in, in the series. The first book is actually just about the one character um, where the second character in the book doesn't even come into play um, or in the in the show doesn't even come into play until like the second book and the third character is in the third book here they're kind of all together in you know the series from from without so you know basically starts off the main character her husband is asking her for a divorce um, you know so she's dealing with all of that then the other friend is already divorced and has a teenage daughter and then uh, the third uh, woman was never married basically had a lost love and he kind of comes back into the picture um, you know midway through the the season and it's all of that so you know just one of those cute little romance dramas um, you know not too much wildness going on so uh 10 episodes in the season so you know again nice little you know if you like gilmore girls and and that type of show this is definitely one of those for you okay good pick thank you so my pick this week is Shockingly, not a documentary. <gasps> oh my gosh. Uh, in fact, this was a late pick for me. Uh, I literally just finished watching the first episode 10 minutes before we went uh, live on the stream. Today. So now I have to go back and, and watch it so I can catch up. Um, my pick this week is Space Force, uh, a new series on Netflix where a four-star general begrudgingly teams up with an eccentric scientist to get the United States first and uh, the military's newest agency, the Space Force, ready for liftoff. The brand new show sets out to be a space age workplace comedy. The series was created by Steve Carell, who stars uh, in the show as General Naird, the head of Space Force, and Greg Daniels, who helped develop the U.S. version of the smash hit television show, The Office. Uh, and you can really get an office feel mm -hmm. out of some of the comedy and, and some of the some of the interactions. Uh, but while the show really isn't anything like The Office, it isn't quite perfect. It soars in poking a bit of cheeky fun at the real-life United States Space Force. Fans of Corel, comedy aficionados, and space enthusiasts alike are sure to find something they can enjoy about the show. Um, there's a bit of uh, political satire involved. Mm -hmm. um, the entire premise, I think, is political satire, really. Uh, they kind of make fun of the whole idea of a space force. And, um, and there's one scene in the first episode where um, Steve Carell's brought in. He's promoted to a four-star general, and he's brought in and thinks he's taking over the Air Force. And they tell him, well, no, you're taking over the Space Force. Um, they had, and, and in this meeting, they announced, oh, the, the Space Force is the newest branch of the military, and, and Steve Carell's character chuckles immediately dead, kind of right. like everyone else did when they heard it. Right, right. Um, and uh, he's, you know, the, the Secretary of Defense who's in the room with him says, oh, yeah, don't worry. He, Steve Carell says, I haven't heard anything about this, and the Secretary of Defense says, oh, don't worry, the president will be tweeting this out as an order in about five minutes. <laughs> So there's a lot of poking fun back mm -hmm. and forth over nice. some of the political stuff nice. that's going on. But the show itself, it's surprisingly well produced. They've mm -hmm. got very professional done sets that you could tell they dumped a lot of money into this show to make it look good. Mm -hmm. um, 
And uh, it's the same type of subtle, idiotic, you know, humor that you you kind of got out of the office. Okay. Uh, a lot of uh, character development right in the first episode. A lot of uh, pattern comedy. You know, every time he walks into his office, there's somebody in there and... He walks in and his assistant never bothers to tell him because that whoever's in there said, "Oh, they told, they said don't say anything." Right, it's right. Like, you know, <laughs> you get into this repeated pattern of that. So, it's it's got a lot of potential. I read some of the reviews on it, and some of the reviews were less than stellar about okay. it. Okay. Um, so, we'll see how the rest of the season goes. Okay. With it. But I I like the first episode. I I like Steve Carell. I think he's, mm-hmm. he's hilarious. Yeah, I've always that he does. enjoyed him. So, so yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of it. And and now I can watch it with you. So it's one more thing to add Yay! to the watch list. So that was uh that was all Good we had. Pick. We'll be back in a minute to uh, sum up. Uh, so that was all we had uh, today. Uh, we are actually. On my second monitor here, I'm I'm watching yep. the uh, Launch America on 16 NASA. 16 minutes. We are T-minus uh, 15 minutes, 23 seconds. Hopefully they won't have any issues with weather, and we'll, uh, we'll be able to launch the first uh, astronauts into space from American soil since the retirement of the space shuttle. Kind of exciting. Maybe we'll talk about that if it goes well uh, next week on next mm-hmm. week's show. I'm not sure it qualifies as entertainment news, but it's certainly entertaining for me. Sure. Qualifies as a documentary, right? There you go. Perfect. I'll do my uh, my, <laughs> my insightful pick on it. Sure. So in the meantime, uh, please uh, take a moment to subscribe to any or all of the following on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Castro, and I think that's about it. Sure. Uh, just a note, if you are subscribing, our audio podcasts are insights in entertainment if you look them up, and our video podcasts are insights into things if you look them up. Uh, you're also welcome to check us out on Twitch six days a week at www.twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can email comments at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. On YouTube for our video podcasts at youtube.com insights into things. You can get everything on the web at www.insightsintothings.com. Our audio versions of our podcasts at podcast podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. Com. And if you Whew. love the evil empire, you can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. And that was all we had this week. That is it. All right. Another one in the books. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.